God's character necessitates wrath against sin. The wrath of God is real from heaven against what? Ungodliness and unrighteousness. Why? Because it's harmful to you and God hates things that are hindering you. Suddenly, God's wrath is no longer something to be ashamed of, to steer away from. It's something to embrace and celebrate because God wants to eliminate and eradicate not you. He wants to eradicate the sin that is causing your life to be filled with madness, to be filled with decay, and to be filled with death. And he wants to free you from the pain caused by those things. Hallelujah. Praise God for his wrath. Some of you misunderstood the assignment. Praise God for his wrath. It's a wonderful thing. Let me explain it this way. For God to be true to his character, like who God is, pure love, pure joy. Uh, God is purely satisfied. Like we do not add or subtract to his satisfaction. He is just satisfied in and of himself. Uh, he's just, he's kind. Uh, I want to talk about his love. I, I have a story I want to share, you, share with you that, that kind of demonstrates how great God's wrath is. It doesn't do a good job of talking about his just character or his uh, omniscient character, but it does a really good job of illustrating his love. So let's say, hypothetically, uh, I'm getting some Mexican food. And let's say that I have some queso in my beard. Getting my queso at Viejo, and there's a huge amount of queso in my beard. And you guys know me. I'm kind of a man about town. I like to talk to everybody that will talk to me. And so while we're sitting there, to everybody who I saw the whole city get their queso at Viejo, and I'm like, hey, what's up, Sue? What's up, Rick? What's up, Bob? Hey, Michael. Hey, Nicole. You know, hey, Elena. Hey, everybody. And, and we're at our table, and I have queso in my beard. And we're there for a good long while. Nobody tells me I have queso in my beard. The day goes on, and I go to the store afterwards, and I, I don't know, I got to get a birthday cake because well, Zeke's two today. And while I'm there, I talk to the greeter, I talk to the cashier, I talk to the greeter so long, they're like, listen, go away, I have to greet other customers, you know? Uh, and I still have queso in my beard. I go through the store, four hours have now passed since v my, my queso at Viejo, and I still have queso in my beard. And I talk, and nobody tells me I have queso in my beard. But then let's say, uh, let's say I run into, let's say I run into my buddy Royce. And Royce doesn't even say hi to me. First thing he says, he says, bro, uh, listen, either a bird pooped on your face, or I think you might have queso in your beard. Let me taste it real quick. <laughs> and he yanks it out. And he yanks it out. Listen, in that story, who loved me well? Nobody loved me well except Royce. He was the only one who loved me well. In a similar and much more profound way, this is how God views sin. And his wrath is his expressed dissatisfaction with sin because it's harmful to you. In, the sa in a similar way that the, the queso from Viejo in my beard is embarrassing, humiliating, and harmful to me, in some sense, uh, sin is, is deeply and much more profoundly terrible for you. And so God is saying, I am against it because it's an offense against me and it is harmful to you. Suddenly, God's wrath becomes so much more wonderful. So much more wonderful. Our, our problem, uh, one of our problems is that there's, there's two Greek words to express what wrath is. See, one of them is a word that means a quick fit of rage. And we see extreme expressions of God's wrath, in, especially in the Old Testament, right? You, you see extreme, ex like, like the plagues against Pharaoh. Remember how those happened? The final plague strikes down the firstborn of the families. And we're like, whoa, God, why would a good and righteous God do that? Like, why is he so angry? He just slays the firstborn. Or when they travel through the desert, the, the unrighteous, the ground opened up and swallowed them. And we're like, man... A uh, low view of, holiness, of the holiness of God creates a what? A disgust for the wrath of God. And we're like, well, God, that's gross. Why would you do that? And, and you see these expressions of God's wrath that are severe. Uh, but that's because um, you probably haven't studied the background behind some of those expressions of wrath. Let me tell you something. Every, I haven't studied all of them in depth, but every one that I have studied, did you know before the wrath was, was put on display, there was substantial warning and call to repentance. Jesus said, uh, Jesus uh, talked to Jerusalem, said, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, O town of prophets uh, who come to you with the message of God and you kill them. What God would often do is he would send prophets to warn people of their sin 
so they could be free from sin and also free from wrath. And what people often do is they kill the messenger. Right? And, and there's some stories, I don't have time to get into it, but there, there's one story where, like, God sent Israel to wipe out a whole nation as they conquered the promised land. And we're like, God, that's so mean. Why would you do that? Except for God gave them hundreds of years of warning before he did it. And by the time he wiped them out, they became so what? Wicked in their thinking, futile in their thinking, that, that w- w- the many of these societies, they had reached the lowest sustainable uh, means of living before society collapses because they were so evil. So they worshipped other gods, and they sacrificed babies to those gods as an expression of worship. And God said, like, I just can't tolerate this anymore, so your time's up. I've given you hundreds of years of warning, and you're done. Plus, Romans 1 says everybody has had God revealed to them, so they're without excuse. See, the reality is, is the word used to describe God's wrath in Scripture is one that expresses slow patience, loving mercy, a calculated expression of wrath, not a quick fit of rage. Always preceded by what? Warning. And, now, and, and so, so suddenly, God's wrath becomes something way different than the, what the world has taught you to think about God's wrath. It's something that is, is expressed to save us from destruction, or after never heeding the warning of destruction, then he has to eliminate the sin because it doesn't just hurt you. Sin uses you to hurt other people. And here's, there's multiple ways God expresses his wrath. There's the final wrath of God. You see in Revelation 20, there's the final judgment where all things are judged. Evil is sent to the lake of fire, and righteous people who have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus enter paradise forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, new heaven and new earth. Praise God. Then you have the permissive wrath of God. Uh, Romans, uh, or provisional wrath of God. Romans like 13 says, obey the leaders of your land. And the provisional wrath of God can be destructive or corrective. Say destructive. destructive. Say corrective. corrective. Destructive. destructive. Corrective. corrective. The, the pro- provisional wrath of God is kind of like a cause and effect. Sometimes he lets you pay the idiot tax. Anybody familiar with that one? I've invested a lot of money in that tax. (laughs) Lots of it. I try to save you from paying the tax I already paid. Uh, But but what happens is, uh, he he says, hey, listen, uh, you need to to sometimes face the natural consequences of your actions. And and sometimes it's discipline. Say like, hey, this is bad, but I'm going to let you learn the lesson. And then I'm going to discipline to correct you. You, so you have the provisional wrath of God. And then, so sometimes it's, we call it wrath, but really it's just discipline from like a parent. Uh, or you have the permissive wrath of God, which is what this text is about. Therefore, God gave them up to what? The evil things they were asking for. There's some situations in which, and this is what Christians do sometimes, right? Uh, we claim to be children of God, worshiping God, loving God, devoted to God, surrendered to God. And, but we live in purposeful rebellion against God. And then we go to God and say, God, would you bless the things of rebellion in my life? God, would you bless my relationship that is built in complete uh, contradiction to your guides for relationships? Uh, God, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm lying and cheating to get ahead, and would you help me be prosperous in my way of life that's lying and deceitful and cheating and stealing, right? And what we do is we often give God uh, things in rebelling against him and say, God, would you, would you just bless that and just make it even better than it is? And God sometimes, he says, he says well, I'm not going to bless it, but I will give you the desire of your heart. You want these evil things, and so I'm just, I'll let you have them. I'll let you have them. Where does all this lead us? Verse 20 says, they have no excuse. 215, it continues the conversation. They have no excuse. The reality is, is I want you to see that we are without excuse in our sins. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I can't explain all of this to you. It's dense. It's a lot. But I hope at the very least we can say that we are all without excuse. And what I want to do is I want to show you the fourth way God has revealed his wrath. Jesus. See, God revealed his wrath that while acknowledging all of our deep and profound sinfulness, God acknowledged that you're helpless in your sin. Me too. God acknowledged that your sin is harming you and destructive to you. Me too. 
God acknowledged that you, you fought against your sin and you've lost, me too. God acknowledged that, that your sin is more powerful than you, me too. And so God acknowledged that I'm going to provide a way to overcome your sin. And you're not the way to overcome your sin, Jesus is. And what we have to understand is that when Jesus was on the cross, he didn't just die and wash away your sins. He actually received your wrath. The wrath due to your sins. All of the hell we deserve for our sins, Jesus received that so that you will never, ever have to. 